In order to understand how a computer interprets an input or recognizes an input, we have to go back to the base level and talk about the computer and, and uh, its language. So the computer has a language known as binary, and that language is a combination of zeros and ones. And so it makes interpretations of those zeros and ones. In order to provide a zero to the computer, we would provide a low input. So that would be really close to zero voltage. If we wanted to produce a one, we would provide a high input. So if it was a five volt system, somewhere around five volts or four volts would be considered a high input. That would then be interpreted as a one. So we would have a series of highs and lows, and those would be uh, interpreted as a zero or a one. A computer will have several inputs. Um, this particular input that we've zoomed in on now is known as a pull-up resistor. We use a pull-up resistor in order to um, interpret a signal that is being sent um, from a switch in this case uh, to know whether or not the switch is open or closed. This yellow box on this particular pull-up resistor represents the voltage sense. If it helps, you can think of this voltage sense as a little multimeter that's evaluating what is the voltage at the um, splice point that we see right here. So it's measuring the voltage and uh, making interpretations based on that. If we were to measure the voltage on the exterior pin, the pin that we have um, access to, we would also see that without anything connected, the value is 3.3 volts. A computer might use a pull-up resistor, like this example, or a pull-down resistor. A pull-down resistor, we swap out the 3.3 volts to a ground, and we would have zero volts until we connected uh, power to that. Most computers are going to use a pull-up resistor. All right, now I'm gonna show you another example, and we're gonna be using uh, five volts here, and we're gonna walk through the process and uh, try to help to understand how the computer is sensing this change in a switch. Let's start right at the power source. So inside the ECU, um, in this example, I'll have a five volt um, source. So I've stepped down the 12 volts coming from the battery. On some vehicles, you might see this at eight and even sometimes 12, but five, five volts is, is probably the most common uh, source that we will find. So this is the power in the circuit. The next component is this fixed resistor. Um, this is probably where students get the most confused when thinking about this circuit. This is the load in the circuit. So think of this as like an LED or a bulb. This just happens to be a fixed resistor and the voltage will drop at this resistor. The next area of the circuit is this voltage sense. You could think of this as a small multimeter that I've connected to the circuit and I'm monitoring the voltage right there. What is critical about this is the position of the volt, voltage sense. This is happening after the load. The switch is the controlling component of the circuit. The switch is found outside of the ECU. The final component here is the ground. The ground would be connected to the ground that is also found in the ECU, and both of those are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So let's take a look at the circuit in its current condition. The switch is in the open position. As the slide suggests, we should think about what would the voltage sense um, value read when the switch is in the open position. Take a minute to think about that. All right, hopefully you took a um, time to think about what the voltage sense uh, would read. Um, the voltage sense in this example, as the circuit is now, the circuit is in the open position. The voltage sense, sense would read five volts. The reason that it's reading five volts 
is that the 5 volts is not dropping at the resistor. The reason the 5 volts is not dropping at the resistor is current is not flowing through this circuit. The switch in the open position is preventing the current from flowing through the circuit. Now let's close the switch and see what happens to the voltage sense. So this uh, picture now shows us with a closed switch. Take a few seconds to think about what would happen to the voltage sense. Hopefully we were able to recognize that the voltage sense would go to zero volts. The reason that the voltage sense goes to zero volts is I have now completed the circuit. Current is flowing through this circuit and I am dropping the five volts at the load in the circuit, which is the fixed resistor. After the fixed resistor, which is the load, we have no volts remaining. All right, so you might be asking yourself why. why. Why do we have this resistor in place? What's the point of this pull-up resistor? The purpose of the pull-up resistor is to um, eliminate a phenomenon known as floating. Floating is, is, occurs um, when we have a wire um, that, that picks up uh, radiation or electromagnetic signals or something from the environment and gives us a value that is neither high nor low. Adding this resistor and then completing a circuit gives us a very solid ground on whether it is 5 volts or whether it is 0 volts and we, we eliminate the floating value um, that we might uh, read on uh, a meter. Um, we'll go ahead and write some code and run a program that will um, help us to see this floating in action and then we'll sh see how we um, eliminate it. All right, let's open a terminal and we will navigate to our folder. And let's do a git pull to make sure we have the most recent code. And we will be working inside of lab number five. If we look in lab number five, the first code that we're going to write is this lab 5.0.0. Let's go ahead and open that up and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to go up to Thony, open that up. So here in Thony, let's open up ATTC 3260 and then lab 5 and lab 5.0.0. This is a really straightforward piece of code. Here we have just an importing statement for um, GPIO. Then we import the time. Um, the pin that we are going to be using is pin number 11. So that's physical pin number 11. We set that up right here as physical pin number 11 and we change it to be an input. So here is physical pin 11 and then it is going to be an input. All right. Then we um, are simply just calling the setup function right here. So this function will run and then we're going to be inside of this while loop. Inside the while loop, we have this variable called pin state. And uh, what we're doing is we're doing gpio.input, and then we just say, what is the current state of the pin? If the pin is in a state of true, or the value is equal to 1, so right here this would mean that um, the value is high. Okay, if the value is high, then um, we want it to print high. If the value is low, right here, this one is low, then we want it to print um, the value is low. So it's going to go back and forth as it runs this high and then low. And then we're going to, to pause it for about five seconds in between each time that we read it. When we run the control C, that drops us out of the while loop, and then we run a GPIO cleanup to release the resources. All right, let's see this in action. In preparation for running this lab, um, we want to connect our multimeter to uh, physical pin number 11, which is GPIO pin 17, and then a ground. I just chose the ground at the very bottom. What this reading is going to give us is that voltage sense value. 
Now remember, this first time that we run the code, we are not putting in the pull-up resistor, so we may see some floating volta voltage values at the meter. All right, navigate to your terminal. Uh, we want to be in lab 5. We're going to be running lab 5.0.0. So run, uh, issue the command python 5.0.0.py. .0 so here we're showing a reading of the pi is low. The expected voltage value that we'd see would be a low voltage. I'm going to move the meter leads around a little bit and see if we can also duplicate a high voltage. Moving the multimeter leads around is simply just exposing the pin because I have that long piece of metal. I'm exposing the pin to more electromagnetic signals that are found in the air. As I move it around, I can see a change in voltage at the meter. Even though the voltage change isn't super significant, we can see that the high and low um, has both been registered in our program. So that would not be very consistent and would not give us the value of the input that we're trying to measure. In order to decrease the amount of floating that occurs in a circuit, we've got to have that pull-up resistor in place. Let's go ahead and stop the program by running a control plus C. Let's look at what we had to change in order to make this a uh, pull-up resistor. It actually can be done just simply through the code. The way the Raspberry Pi is built, it can, uh, it can take care of this. So we're going to go up to File, and let's open up our ATTC folder in Lab 5, and we're going to be working in Lab 5.0.1. The only thing that I've changed in here is this part of the code. Okay, if we go back to this other lab, we stopped right there. There happens to be a third argument that we can pass in the setup function, and that argument is this, pull up down, and we are saying that this is a pull up resistor. So now this becomes a pull up resistor. Let's see what happens when we run this code and measure it with our multimeter. All right, in the terminal, Go ahead and execute the Python command and then put lab 5.0.1 and we will go ahead and execute that. So here we're seeing that the pin is in the high position. It'll wait five seconds and print it again. Because this is a pull up resistor, an open circuit or no signal going to this pin would leave the value at 3.3 volts or a high value. Notice that when I move around the meter lead, I really don't see any changes or effect from electromagnetic um, interference. Now what I've done is I've taken a jumper wire and connected it to ground, and now I'm going to touch it to the meter lead. When I touch it to the meter lead, notice that the voltage value goes to zero, and the program is reading that as a low condition. So here I am low because now the switch is closed, right? I've closed that circuit. Now I've come back up to 3.3 when I remove the ground pin, and then I touch the ground pin to it, and I see that I go back to a low condition. So it's very clear what is a high and what is a low, and that is based on there being a pull-up resistor in place. Let's go ahead and exit the program with a control C. All right, in order to um, learn a little bit more about this, uh, what I want you to do is try to see if you can figure out on your own how to set up a program like this, but instead use a pull down resistor. I'll give you a hint on this line you would replace dot PUD underscore up uh, with dot PD, D, whoops, PUD underscore down. Okay, so that will create a pull down resistor, and um, then we would uh, run the code uh, accordingly. Now remember, with a pull down resistor, um, it starts out low, and then we would connect something to make it high. So hopefully that's enough of a hint for you to be able to figure out how to set that up. Show your instructor once you have it set up.